Archiving started. In this session, we're going to be looking at the powers of telescopes. Frequently, people ask about the power of a telescope. When they see one, they, they will say, what is the power of the telescope? There are actually three powers of a telescope that we want to describe during this session. Telescopes, uh, two basic types of telescopes, the refractive telescope and the reflecting telescope. Refractor has uh, a main lens. Uh, light gets focused through that lens. Um, and uh, there's an eyepiece on the back side that the viewer looks through uh, to see the image um, out in space. The diameter of the lens or the diameter of the mirror is sometimes referred to as the telescope's aperture, the diameter. So the diameter of the objective lens uh, could be 60 millimeters, about 2.4 inches. It could be 100 millimeters, about 4 inches. 150 millimeters is about 6 inches. And the same thing for a reflector. You have a 100 millimeter reflector. Um, you have a 150 millimeter reflector. Uh, the large telescopes are uh, typically measured in meters, meter, two meter, meter uh, telescopes. And roughly, remember that a meter is about three feet. Uh, most telescopes that you and I have access to are small telescopes you can buy, 60 millimeters, 100 millimeters, 200 millimeters is an 8-inch aperture telescope. So telescopes are rated by the diameter of the lens or the mirror, sometimes referred to as the aperture. In the reflecting telescope, uh, light gets focused and an eyepiece views it, or today, usually some electronics are here in replace of the eyepiece. In the uh, Newtonian reflector, named for Isaac Newton, uh, light comes down a tube. Uh, it then gets focused, and right before it focuses, a flat mirror, a, it's what's referred to as a secondary mirror, uh, reflects the light out through the tube to the outside where an eyepiece a viewer with an eyepiece can uh, can view that uh, can view that image. So a refractor and a ref reflector are the basic uh, types of telescopes. Uh, here is your basic refracting telescope. Uh, uh, main lens in the front. Uh, light travels down the tube. Actually, the tube is there to hold uh, to hold the um, uh, primary the uh, the objective. Uh, lens, uh, the aperture, a lot focuses down the tube, um, and back here is a focusing mechanism. And for convenience, there is a little 90-degree uh, prism put in here, uh, so that the person then uh, views uh, in a uh, through the eyepiece in a convenient mode. Otherwise, the light would come down the back, and you'd have to kneel down or sit in a chair to be able to look at this. So this is a classical refractor. Uh, one that Galileo first used to look at, uh, to see the moons of Jupiter, uh, to, to note Saturn had something with it, uh, to see the phases of Venus. Uh, the, the reflecting telescope uh, it has an interesting view to it, what it looks like. It has a uh, tube so that the light uh, light comes down that tube so this thing is outfitted with a tube with a hole cut in the side so there's a tube uh, the mirror fits in the bottom light comes through the top of that tube um, it then um, it comes through an opening at the top actually it's a tube it's open light comes down through the through it uh, hits a main mirror that is secured in the bottom uh, light then gets reflected out the side. There's a hole cut in the side of the tube, and then an eyepiece uh, is used to uh, to view uh, through that. Uh, today, manufacturers are making a compound telescope. Uh, this telescope is has a lens in the front, um, not like a standard uh, telescope lens. It's very thin. Uh, there is also a secondary mirror. But that secondary mirror, instead of being flat, is curved. Um, it is actually a convex lens. And at the back, uh, your primary lens, 
uh, focused light. So light comes of the tube through the lens, hits the main mirror in the back, is reflected back up to the, the small convex mirror behind this little holder, and then gets pushed back down the uh, telescope tube, uh, and then a, a 90 degree mirror back here puts the eyepiece in a convenient place to look. So effectively within this scope, uh, there is a telescope tube that's actually uh, about two meters long, it's about six feet long, uh, and it's compressed into the size of this tube that's approximately 18 inches long. So this is a compound telescope. Uh, these are telescopes that you would see uh, today. There are three powers of telescope. Uh, the first power is light gathering power. The second power is magnifying power, and that's usually the power that someone uh, asks about when they see a telescope. What can this thing magnify? And resolving power, what kind of detail can it see? So, uh, in short, light gathering power is uh, for the telescope to make things look brighter. That's actually what a telescope does. Once you collect light, you can then magnify it a little bit, and you can see then more detail in resolving things than you can see with the human eye. Your eye is a small telescope. Uh, when it is fully dilated in a dark room, in, in other words, the dark section of the eye, uh, well, your eye will dilate, as you well know, in a darkened room or in a darkened location. And uh, most people, when they're younger, can, can dilate to about 7 millimeters. So you have uh, your eye, if we use it in comparison, is a, a small telescope. Uh, he made a mirror that's uh, 6 inches. Uh, it's 150 millimeters. Uh, this is something that uh, a telescope maker, usually one of the first teles telescopes uh, that uh, someone, an enthusiast makes, is about six inches in diameter. The aperture is six, six inches or 150 millimeters. The light gathering power then is when you compare how much light falls on that six inch mirror compared to how much light would fall in your eye when it is fully dilated. So you know to calculate error area. Uh, it's the area is four pi r, squ pi r squared is the is the area. Uh, so you would have to compare the area uh, of the mirror or the lens compared to the area of the eye. And so that would take some mathematical calculation to do. Light gathering power is uh, pi times the radius of the mirror squared divided by pi times the radius of the human eye diameter squared. That's light gathering power. Well, that's pretty cumbersome to calculate areas. Uh, there's an easier way to do that, and that is really just to take the diameter of the mirror, square it, and to take the diameter of the human eye and square that. Uh, and that diameter, yeah, for practical purposes, let's just call that 7 times 7 square. 50. That makes some arithmetic of here on pretty pretty easy. Here's a calculation showing the light gathering power starting from an aperture of one millimeter all the way up to one meter or a thousand millimeters. Uh, your standard uh, telescopes that you would buy uh, at a store. Uh, a uh, 100 millimeter telescope, that's about four inches, 100 millimeters, four inch telescope. Uh, and that shows up over here on this side. 100 millimeters uh, gives you about 200 light gathering power. So in other words, a four inch telescope can collect about 100 times more light than the human eye. If you double that to an eight inch telescope, uh, it becomes uh, about 800. Uh, it becomes about 800 times the human eye. So uh, a lens or mirror of um, 200 millimeters, which is about here, is uh, approximately 800 times what the human eye can collect. Notice as the telescope gets bigger and bigger, up here about um, up here approximately 500 
millimeters. That's half a meter, uh, 18 inches roughly in diameter. That telescope collects 5,000 times more light than the human eye does because it's bigger and more light falls on the area uh, of a 18 inch diameter lens or mirror than does on your human eye. When you get a very large telescope in the one meter size, you have some amateur telescopes, some really uh, uh, enthusiasts who really like astronomy. Uh, they are, you can get about 20,000 times more light into a large telescope than you can the human eye, meaning you can see things 20,000 times dimmer through an 18 inch telescope than you can with the human eye. With a four inch telescope, you can see things approximately 200 times dimmer than the human eye can see. And with an eight inch telescope, you can see things about 800 times dimmer than the human eye can see. So the main purpose of a telescope is to see things that the human eye cannot see because they are very, very faint out there in space. And just as you look at this diagram, you'll, you'll notice that the chart, the graph, is really a straight line. If we put a straight line in here, a straight line from um, one up to one meter. Uh, this is actually a curve uh, that is based upon the square, uh, as the square of the, um, uh, as the diameter change, uh, increases, the um, the brightness or the light gain power increases very small at first and then very rapidly. So this is a, a non-linear, non-straight line uh, relationship because you're dealing with squares. So if going from a four inch uh, at 200 light gathering power to an eight inch, 800 light gathering power, that's four times uh, just by doubling the area. And that continues and continues uh, to increase as the a telescope gets larger and larger. So the primary purpose of a telescope is its light gathering power. The second and probably most frequently used or discussed property is its, its magnification, its magnifying power. And that is really caused by the eyepiece. Uh, the focal length of the telescope is fixed. Uh, the focal length of the eyepieces are fixed as well, but those eyepieces uh, can be interchanged. And they also have focal lengths. Uh, and you can see some of those focal lengths here. Here's a, a 50 millimeter focal length eyepiece. Here's a 30 millimeter focal length eyepiece. Uh, here's a 25 millimeter focal length eyepiece. The lower the number, the higher the magnification. And these eyepieces are, are really pretty complicated these days, even the ones that you and I could buy to put into our telescopes. Uh, they have m many, many lenses. They're multi-lensed um, devices. Uh, that create the magnification uh, for uh, for you to look through. The the as the telescope focal length gets smaller, you will notice that the aperture, the little diameter, the little hole that you look through, is actually very very uh, small in in diameter, and that's why as the power gets higher and higher and higher on a telescope. Um, it becomes more difficult to look through. One, because the little hole that you look through is much smaller. Uh, the, the, and you look at a smaller area of the sky, and it tends to get really blurry as the power goes way up. This particular one is a four millimeter, a high power eyepiece almost in every, in every case. The focal length is the distance between the lens or the mirror and its focus point, where the light focused. So the main objective, the main primary mirror, focuses light and produces a little image of it there. And then your eyepiece serves as a magnifying lens, whereby then you can see that image larger than you can with the human eye. And the magnification, really very easy to calculate. It is the focal length of the mirror or the lens divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. And for some simple calculations, it looks just like this. A telescope that has a 1,000 millimeter focal length, by using a 25 millimeter focal length eyepiece, the object that you're looking at will look 40 times bigger or 40 times closer. 
so Jupiter will look 40 times bigger than it does to the human eye or 40 times closer. Uh, the moon will look 40 times closer than it does to the human eye. If you have a 2,000 millimeter focal length telescope, uh, that's two meters, one meter, two meter focal lengths, and a 25 millimeter. 25 millimeters is about one inch focal length. Uh, you, you see 80 times closer or 80 times bigger Jupiter, 80 times sm uh, closer or bigger to us. So the magnification, the magnifying power is simply the focal length of the telescope divided by the focal length of the eyepiece that you're looking through. And that's the power that most people think of. So uh, light gathering power is how much light the telescope collects or picks up compared to the human eye. The magnifying power is how large or how much closer the image looks compared to your eye. The third power is known as the resolving power. And the resolving also depends upon the size, the diameter of the aperture, the aperture of the telescope, meaning the lens, diameter of the lens or the diameter of the mirror. So as the aperture gets bigger and bigger, and notice along the bottom in this chart, as the aperture gets bigger and bigger, uh, this again is from one millimeter to 1,000 millimeter, one millimeter to one meter, uh, 18 inch, di uh, 36 inch diameter uh, lens, uh, you get more and more detail seen. And these smallest features that we're looking at here are in miles. Uh, so a, a telescope that has a diameter of about 150 millimeters, that's your six inch telescope, the smallest feature, regardless of the magnification, the smallest feature on the moon that you can see is about one mile across. So I've had telescopes outside before, and someone said to me, can you see where the astronauts walked on the moon with your telescope? No, uh, because they, uh, the smallest feature, and that's just, just discernible. You can just tell something there without any detail in it. In a six-inch telescope, is one mile across. Um, in an eight-inch telescope, about 200 millimeters, uh, you're looking at uh, being able to see the smallest the smallest detail on the moon that you could see is approximate um, three-fourths of a mile across. Even with the largest telescopes that we have, even here above a meter, uh, notice that we're much less than a mile here, but still uh, the smallest features that you can see here are roughly two-tenths of a mile with a one-meter telescope. And notice how this is not going down so fast. Even with bigger telescopes, the increase is not really very dramatic um, because uh, the, the features on the moon are very, very small. So when you walk outside at night and you look at the moon, you, the smallest feature uh, that you can see there is several miles across. Uh, for example, this uh, feature here on the southern part of the moon, the crater, is called Tycho. You can see it. It's about 85 miles across on the moon. Within that crater, uh, there is a large mountain. We'll talk about uh, that mountain and, and Tycho itself and craters when we talk about planets. Yes, this is named after the famous astronomer Tycho. Uh, that particular mountain there in the center is uh, approximately 1.6 miles tall. So that makes that whole crater, or that whole mountain uh, in the center of Tycho, um, uh, roughly uh, two to three miles across. So uh, a large telescope, even a, or a small telescope like a, you and I would use, six to eight inch telescope, we would be able to see that uh, mountain within Tycho, a very small dot. Perhaps we would see a shadow. Uh, depending upon where the sun is, you can see a shadow being cast here uh, by, by the mountain top, by the mountain. So the powers of a telescope are really, really significant because that provides us brightness. That provides us the ability to make the image look a little bit bigger. And that provides us the ability to see some detail. So these three powers are known as light gathering. That is the most important property to me.
make the image look brighter. Secondly, the magnification to make it look a little bit bigger. And thirdly, the resolving is to see the details in what you're looking at. So these three powers are the powers of a telescope listed here in order. Light gathering power is the diameter squared of the telescope. Make it metric, make it millimeters, divided by 50, and that will give you the light gathering power of an optical telescope. So a um, 100 millimeter telescope, um, square that and divide it by 50, and that will give you 200, millim 200 light gathering power that telescope magnification is focal length of the eyepiece divided by the focal length focal length of the objective divided by focal length of the eyepiece resolving power I'm not going to ask you to calculate the calculation isn't really difficult um, but it is essentially the bigger the telescope the more details you can see um, in in the uh, object that you're looking at so those are the three very important powers of a telescope